so good morning all uh, today you will, we will be continuing with the uh, topic of gray relation and analysis so last uh, lecture uh, i was giving a brief introduction about gray theory and why and how and what type of uncertainties we will be using gray theory okay so the type of uncertainty and the type and kind of uncertainties uh, the uh, the mathematical theories which can deal with the, the type and kind of different type and kind of uncertainties uh, that we have mentioned in the previous lecture uh, uh, if you have not seen that you can uh, see the previous lecture so today we will be discussing clearly on the gray relation analysis methodology which is a uh, classified as a multi attribute decision making method of uh, using the utilizing the gray theory okay so this is as a kind of gray uh, relational uh, uh, based method and we will be discussing the step by step implementation of the gray relational analysis so we will be taking a Uh, logistic partner selection problem so we are discussing a real uh, research problem so that it will be easy to replicate for your studies also because usually in the case i already told in the previous uh, lecture that that the sample problems will not be as such you cannot replicate for any research problem because it will be difficult to incorporate uh, because the sample problem will have limited number of alternative and very limited number of attributes so for uh, this sample problem demonstration with the uh, with a particular mcdm or an mdm uh, that you will have so much of struggles to implement for a, a real research problem so here we will be showing a real research problem uh, of the logistic partner selection so that you will have a clear idea of how we can implement the methodology of gray relational analysis okay so we can continue with the lecture so gray relation analysis i have already told about uh, uh, the previous gray models and all you can listen to the previous lecture so we will uh, start with the benefits of gra so gray theory we can say it is developed from the gray sets by combining system theory space theory and control theory so i already mentioned that gray theory is developed by julong dang in 1982 and later he has given a number of applications of the gray theory the methodology is using gray theory in 1989 and which was widely developed by sifeng liu and wailin uh, in their book uh, the gray information theory and practical applications okay so uh, you can refer to that book also and the base purpose of uh, the julong dang in 1982 and 89 you will get a brief idea of the gray theory and gray numbers and uh, i will give you some uh, some of the important points Uh, we will be discussing okay the gray system methodology can handle many of the ambiguities gener uh, generated from imprecise human decision i already told that uh, that this is the methodology or the gray theory is the theory which is mainly used to handle information uncertainty so this main advantage is that we can handle the ambiguities from imprecise human decision okay then the theory can be successfully incorporated with any of the decision making pro process so as to improve the quality of judgment or the exactitude of results and one of the major advantages we can say it is like it can generate satisfactory outcome using relatively small amount of data or great variability of among the factors so we can say that we have a i already uh, discussed this in the previous lecture but we can uh, i will, will be repeating that the advantage or the beauty of gray theory is that we can get reasonably good conclusions out of very small data sets okay it is possible through aggregate regularization of the data through proper treatment so we will be analyzing so the whatever data available we will be treating through uh, like different processes maybe in the incidence analysis we will be doing strengthening weakening operator aggregator operator so many operators will be employing and finally we will be making the data uh, that will be uh, able for prediction or able to make uh, uh, like the incidence analysis or maybe relational analysis so this is the beauty of gray theory that uh, we can do aggregate regularization of the data through proper treatment okay so the steps in the partner selection problem we can say the first step so the first step is you have a company and you have to find the which who are the available alternative logistic partners okay so this alternative partners of the logistic partners we can represent it by si where i is representing the uh, the index that is varying from s1 to m so i can vary from 1 to m m is the total number of partners available so maybe we can form a committee of different members so that we can uh, have a 
proper evaluation that these are the maybe five uh, available logistics partners are there they are ready to supply or uh, supply the th third party services or the third party logistic services for the company so we are analyzing that si that is is i one two three four etc up to sm uh, number of that is m number of partners next uh, what we have to do the second step is we can survey on the attributes of selection right we have to fix some of the attributes for the selection of the logistic partner so we have to next uh, this analyst they can identify the factors for the critical impact of the uh, partner selection so we can consider maybe sustainability uh, factor uh, maybe the primary performance factors we have to consider first so which are the primary pe performance factor with the price uh, the or the cost we can say and the quality then with the flexibility okay then we can uh, consider other factors like responsiveness uh, responsiveness uh, resilience or sustainability okay so many factors you can include for the logistic partner selection according to you your problem okay so you can consider which is your basic problem and based on that you can modify your partner selection problem and these attributes and uh, this indicated here as sra okay so sra j equal to so here j indicates the factors okay so there are n number of factors okay so j varies from 1 to m uh, 1 to n okay so this is so there are n number of uh, factors or attributes for selection and we have m number of partners available okay so Uh, to the moving to the next slide we can see that next step so step three is to uh, we can convert the linguistic to gray scale of assessment of weights for the attributes okay so we can uh, first determine the weights of the attributes so we have five attributes suppose okay maybe cost quality uh, maybe responsiveness etc etc we have five attributes for the logistics partner selection and we can convert this linguistic maybe we are measuring those in uh, linguistic scales labels we can say that very good very uh, good uh, like that okay uh, low very low this kind of labels you are measuring with respect to with based on the uh, the committee of the experts you are measuring the weights of the attribute determining through uh, maybe in linguistic label you can convert it into gray scale so what is a gray scale a gray number will be having a lower bound and an upper bound suppose we that uh, suppose uh, somebody is giving a value of very good okay you can use a conversion scale like very good is equal to 8 10 okay and maybe good uh, we can represent it by 8 uh, maybe 6 to 8 we can represent as uh, the good value okay so that way based on a conversion scale you can e you can easily convert the linguistic labels into uh, the the gray scales okay so gray number will be having a lower bound and an upper bound so in most partner selection problem we have attributes the main problem we are facing with any supplier selection problem or the logistic partner selection problem is that we have for evaluation we have both qualitative and quantitative criteria and we have to incorporate the qualitative as well as quantitative criteria for evaluation okay then we have the ambiguity okay we have the ambiguity for the imprecise data and the this can be reduced with the linguistic assessment of the attribute okay so because we are saying uh, you are simply giving 8 10 means that somebody may be very good will be 8 only and someone may be out of 10 out of 10 you are getting then only you will be giving very good okay so that kind of uh, that ambiguity can be incorporated by from uh, you are converting the linguistic label to a gray number so this is the advantage of that and the linguistic assessment can be converted into associated gray values where gray value is having a lower bound uh, it is denoted by g with a uh, uh, with a line below and an upper bound with a g on a line or, uh, which is uh, shown in the uh, the upper side of the g okay so g this uh, a line below which is uh, shown uh, uh, which is indicating the lower bound of g and a uh, line above g which is indicating a, the upper bound of g okay now we can see that there are <coughs> t analyst in the committee okay so each analyst is represented by k okay so k the analyst will be evaluating the particular the weights of the criteria or maybe the uh, logistic partner okay so k equal to 1 2 3 etc up to t so there are total t analyst so which are the uh, notations we have m n and t okay so uh, what is m representing 
<coughs> m is representing the number of logistic partner n is representing the number of attributes for uh, we are considering for evaluation and t is representing the number of analysts in the committee okay now the weights in degussie scales assigned uh, for the kth analyst can be represented by w j 1 j 2 j 3 etc up to j t okay so this way we can represent it for the weights given by the the analyst okay so so this can be we can represent it in gray scales that gray number is represented by a and into mark inside a circle so this is in the uh, uh, shown as the gray number wj1 gray number wj2 and it is read as gray number wj okay wj3 similar way we can indicate it okay so the be the set of gray number associated with the weights okay now what we have to do we have uh, t number of analysts so we have to aggregate the responses so we can take the nor the average of the responses so you can simply take the gray average of the responses the gray average is similar to the normal uh, number average we can say that you take the the, uh, the the average of the lower bound and the average of the upper bound similar way 1 by t into the gray number wj1 plus gray number wj2 plus etc up to gray number of wjt which is the last analyst rating okay now what we have to do this can be uh, aggregately we can represent it as the gray number wj equal to 1 by t sigma k equal to 1 to n k is the individual analyst of gray number wjk okay so we can indicate in the in this uh, like reduced form okay so then we can say that each uh, the aggregated gray number or the gray number which is rated the weights given will be having a lower bound wjk and an upper bound of wjk so this is the way we are indicating now in the above equation what we can modify you can expand it right at 1 by t into k equal to 1 to n lower bound of wj comma 1 by t into sigma k equal to 1 to t upper bound of wjk so this is the gray operations you can read on the gray addition multiplication subtraction and uh, the division okay so addition and subtraction are very easy i already told you can take the average of, of the lower bound and average of the upper bound multiplication and division are little bit complex so wherever it is needed i will be explaining how gray number is multiplied or you can refer to the base paper of uh, deng for the basic gray operations okay now we have to convert the linguistic gray scale of assessment so we have the attributes uh, rated for the particular logistic partner right the attribute j is rated by analyst k for the partner i okay so we have the jth attribute which is rated by the kth analyst for the particular logistic partner i so this we can represent it as g i j k okay so this is the way we are indicating uh, <coughs> the i j k so what is i i is indi indicating the particular the partner and j is indicating the typical attribute and k is indicating the analyst which is the kth analyst okay so i equal to 1 to x to up to m j equal to 1 to x to up to n and k equal to 1 to x to up to t so this is already we mentioned okay so don't confuse i j k so these index uh, indices are for different uh, that uh, indicating uh, the one for the partner a uh, logistic partner second for the attribute and third for the analyst okay so this we can uh, represent as gray number of gijk okay so that will be simply we can uh, 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 denote it as the lower bound of gijk comma upper bound of gijk that is the gray number gijk can be represented and similar way we can take the average of the rating similarly we have taken for the weights okay so gijk that average is equal to 1 by t into gij1 plus etc up to gij t okay so now you got the average weights and the average rating which you obtain from the experts okay so you have a committee experts from based on that you the, the you are determining the attributes and the committee is evaluating the weights of the attribute as well as the the rating of particular uh, particular uh, logistic partner okay so we have different logistic partner we are rating on each attribute how they are performing maybe uh, in a linguistic scale later we we can convert it into the gray scale using a conversion scale i already mentioned that okay so this equation how we can modify we can simply take it as the lower bound of one that is 1 by t into sigma k equal to 1 to t G, uh, gray number of gijk which can we can take it inside with the lower bound and upper bound that is 1 by t sigma k equal to 1 to t the lower bound of gijk comma 1 by t into sigma 
k equal to 1 to t the upper bound of gijk okay now we can establish the gray decision matrix how we can establish gray decision matrix is obtained from the average gray rating uh, so this is indicated as gray number of gij okay so this uh, we can uh, take it as the average of the responses or the average of the rating you can take similar to that previously mentioned so that is represented by the so that uh, now k is not there why we have taken the average right so k is removed from the picture because we have taken the average of all the uh, the respondents t respondent t respondent and so k is not in the picture so the gray number gij is representing the average of the uh, the ratings okay ratings of the alternatives alternative means the logistic partner here so how we can represent we can represent it using that d matrix d equal to <coughs> gray number g11 g12 etc up to gmn okay so where m is representing the partner and n is representing the m is representing the last partner and n is representing the last attribute so this way we can represent the matrix now what we have to do we have to do a normalization like all other mcdm processes we are doing so normalization we can uh, do for fixing the limits between 0 and 1 okay how we can fix uh, fix the limit between 0 and 1 so we have two ways of normalization for uh, the cost attribute or we can say that the cost attribute and the or the we can say in a different way that uh, that the benefit attribute and the non benefit attribute so because price and all non benefit attributes usually and other uh, uh, conditions maybe we can say for uh, the resilience uh, the capabilities of the supplier flexibility etc can be the benefit attribute so we have the benefit and cost attribute or we can say that we have the benefit and non benefit attribute so we can separate both and we can normalize both of them so a cost attribute can be normalized as how we can uh, normalize uh, a, uh, the the minimization attribute that is gj min divided by the upper bound of gij comma gj min divided by the lower bound of gij and what is gj min i'll be showing gj min is equal to the maximum over i the lower bound of gij so what is only the lower bound values of the gray number you check it and you take the minimum over i so the minimum over i means that it is a row minimum or the column minimum i is representing the row but uh, the minimum of i that is uh, representing the column minimum okay so what is the uh, indication of that because you uh, in any mcdm you please uh, note this point because minimum over i or minimum over j is shown i is representing the row but minimum over i means that you have to take it across the column because first column only first row uh, first element second row first element so uh, uh, actually what you are doing you are doing the taking the minimum across the first column okay so minimum over i means that you are taking the first column minimum okay uh, or the column minimum we can say and uh, minimum over j means that you are taking the minimum of the row values for the first row second row like that okay so the maximization attribute is normalized as gij uh, this uh, is equal to so the normalized uh, matrix or the number gray number we can denote it using star okay so the maximization attribute is normalized as the lower bound of gij divided by gj max comma the upper bound of gij divided by gj max so what is the lower bound upper bound of you have already in the matrix right you know these values and what is gj max gj max is the only unknown uh, thing here so gj max we can find it by maximum over i the upper bound of gij so the minimum of the lower bound is gj min and the maximum of the upper bound across means over i that means the column you take it that is the gij the upper bound the maximum we are taking as the gj max okay so now we have normalized both <coughs> the the cost attribute as well as the benefit attribute okay clear now what what we need to do so uh, this uh, we go for the normalize we can represent the gray decision matrix the normalized matrix the gray number g i1 star g12 uh, sorry gray number g uh, one two, so, sorry uh, gray number of g uh, 1 1 star uh, gray number of g 1 2 star gray number of 1 n star etc up to gray number of g m n star okay so this way we will be representing the normalized 
gray decision matrix and you understand that this is a gray number so I'll, this number will be always having a an upper bound and a lower bound okay so uh, already this is indicated as a single number only but the symbol that is a an indu mark inside a circle this is indicating that the particular number is having a lower bound as well as an upper bound okay clear now what we need to do we have to multiply with the weights right we have already determined the weights of the attribute so we can multiply with the weights okay so gij matrix can be multiplied with the wj wj is the weights of individual attribute okay so for every i we can uh, conclude that we can multiply the gij with the wj okay so for each uh, means i varies uh, for each j equal to 1 we can multiply for all the i values okay similar way because here it is gij and here it is only wj so we can use uh, multiply the one weights over all evaluations okay so for the particular j attribute okay j is indicating the attribute right for the particular attribute you will be having a particular weight only so you can multiply for all the evaluations okay so this way you will be getting the multipliers that is a weighted normalized decision matrix that is indicated by gray number of vij okay and how we are doing gray multiplication i told addition and subtraction are simple for gray number but multiplication is a bit complex thing so how we can do that this is a simple way of gray multiplication gray number multiplication that is we are taking the minimum of the lower bound into lower bound lower bound into upper bound upper bound into lower bound and upper bound into upper bound similar way the upper bound of the multiplied number we will be taking as the maximum of the lower bound into lower bound lower bound into upper bound upper bound into lower bound comma upper bound into upper bound so you have to <coughs> calculate the two gray number you are multiplying it is uh, both of them will having a will be having a an upper bound lower bound and an upper bound so you multiply the low first you multiply the lower bound with the lower bound lower bound with upper bound upper bound with lower bound and upper bound with upper bound okay okay this may be little bit uh, uh, you uh, will be difficult for you to understand in the first time so you can practice it using any of the excel sheet or manually you can practice it then it will be easy for you okay so you calculate uh, these all the multiplication values and you take the minimum minimum of the this value you fix as the minimum of the, the, the of the multiplied number okay and the maximum of this value as the maximum of the uh, or the maximum limit of the the multiplied multiplied number okay vij okay so the gray number vij is represented as the multiplication of gij with the, the weights of the criteria okay so now how will be uh, doing the weighted normalized matrix we can represent it as d double star okay so d was representing the first initial matrix then d star is the normalized matrix d double star is the weighted normalized matrix now our problem we can uh, solve using the weighted normalized matrix now everything the initial part is over okay it is representing the gray number v11 etc up to gray number of vmn okay now what is the next step in gra is we are creating an ide uh, ideal referential set of alternative partners so we will be having uh, we are making a hypothetical partner which is having the best quality so this is we can say that this is the referential partner it is not existing but we can say that this is the ideal referential partner so we are taking this as the ideal referential partner okay so that can be represented as the maximum of values okay so we can take s max which will be having the feature all the good features that is g1 max g2 max g3 max etc up to gn max okay so we can otherwise in form we can represent it as how we can represent it as it is the maximum over i of the lower bound comma the maximum over i of the upper bound okay similar way for i2 i1 i2 etc etc how we'll be calculating for each uh, j we can calculate for each attribute for each attribute we can take the maximum of the values for the supplier so not supplier we can say for the uh, the logistic partner okay so for the particular logistic partner we are taking the maximum of the values okay for a particular attribute and we are taking all the best things from uh, the every supplier and we are constructing an ideal referential supplier okay and we are comparing our partner or the supplier maybe uh, logistic partner we are comparing with the ideal referential partner and we will be 
rating okay so x max s max is not existing it is an ideal referential partner you are taking the best of the uh, alternatives or the uh, the logistic partner the best out of the logistic partner for each criteria okay for the first criteria maximum of lower bound maximum of upper bound similarly for the second criteria maximum of the lower bound maximum of the upper bound similarly for all okay now this is the main thing we are calculating a gray possibility value by comparison okay so this is the possibility value that possibility of our particular supplier is less than s max so we are comparing our particular logistic partner or supplier maybe whatever problem according to you so logistic partner we are comparing with the, the ideal partner and how much the, the possibility it is less than or equal to s max this is what we are calculating and how we are calculating that is 1 by n into sigma j equal to 1 to n p of the gray number vij less than uh, the gray number gj max okay this is the possibility we are calculating and how will be calculating these possibility values can be easily calculated by 1 by n <coughs> of sigma j equal to 1 to n so j equal to 1 to n we can we are saying the summation over the row okay maximum of 0 comma lj star minus maximum of 0 comma bij minus gj max okay so this way divided by lj star here everything we know right vj vij upper bound we know gj max lower bound we know only thing unknown is lj star so lj is indicating the low the, the length of the gray number i will be showing how to calculate the length of the gray number so how this equation can be elaborated j equal to 1 to n right so 1 by n into first j how will be calculating maximum of 0 for every j you put 1 only l1 star minus maximum of 0 b i1 minus g1 max similar way we calculate for uh, the j equal to 2 j equal to 3 etc up to j equal to n so this way you can expand it the second formula we are showing is the expanded formula of the first one where we are putting wherever j is finding you are putting 1 2 3 etc okay so this way you can extend it and this the summation will be giving the possibility values that our particular logistic partner is less than the ideal partner okay less than or equal to the ideal part referential partner and only thing all other things are known only thing unknown is the about the length of the gray number i will be showing the calculation okay so l is representing the length of the gray number which can be calculated as lj star equal to length of the gray number vij plus length of gj max so how will be calculating the length of vij it is vij upper bound minus vij lower bound similar way low length of uh, gj max uh, gray number gj max how will be constructing the upper bound of gj max minus lower bound of gj max okay you will be getting both uh, values you will be adding that you will be getting the length of the gray number okay now we got all the length of the gray number for vij uh, upper bound minus lower bound plus gj max upper bound minus lower bound now we can prioritize this the particular the logistic partner use based on the possibility values or the uh, we can uh, say with the probability also this is actually possibility value so possibility values we can say si minus uh, si less than or equal to s max so how the value is less uh, what is the meaning of that if the possibility value is less the partner is better and more close to the ideal referential supply okay so the possibility that our supplier is less than s max is less that is the uh, mean what is the meaning of that it is very close to the uh, the uh, ideal referential supplier okay the possibility that it is less than the value is less means that it is closer closer to the ideal uh, logistic partner okay so we can say that that uh, the alternative is best okay so we can select the logistic partner which is ideally close to the uh, close to the ideal referential partner or we can say the possibility values we have calculated are low values okay based on that we can uh, the we can do the evaluation of the logistic partner okay so and these are the references you can go with that first two references are the paper references of uh, the 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 julong dang paper and uh, the second uh, two are the sifeng liu and weiling papers uh, the textbook okay you can uh, refer to that for more information i think this is uh, hope this is clear for you and thank you for attending the lecture and one more additional thing i will be mentioning you will be having a confusion uh, with uh, this part right maybe because uh, the vij here you have both values i and j but 
uh, here it is only j is there okay so how we'll be calculating so this is the possibility of that si is less than or equal to s max so you are considering the particular partner only so i equal to 1 means that you are taking the first partner only okay so based on i equal to 1 only you will be making all the evaluation okay so this way you can uh, calculate it okay i equal to 2 means that you have to calculate this possibility value for the second one okay so si less than s max is the general formula for i equal to 1 you can put everywhere i equal to 1 then you will be getting only one number so don't confuse that there are i j for uh, v and for only j for g so how will be calculating so for each i you are calculating so there the confusion will be over so for each i for s equal uh, i equal to 1 you will be calculating this value possibility value for the first logistic partner to be less than s max for i equal to 2 you will be calculating this value for the second logistic partner similar way you will be calculating length also so there is no confusion that here it is i j and here it is j only and how you will be summing the length of this okay so for particular i equal to 1 we are calculating these values okay so hope this is clear and uh, you can practice with a small problem you will be more uh, clear in understanding the gray relation analysis so i have given an example of the real research problem so that it will be more easy to uh, replicate your findings into your research problem okay uh, i hope uh, this is clear for you and uh, thank you for attending the lecture okay thank you